Hello, and welcome to Wall Street Trainings, module on corporate valuation methodologies. My name is Hamilton Lin, president and founder of Wall Street Training, and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions, having worked at Goldman Sachs' Investment Banking Research, Bank of America Securities' Mergers and Acquisitions Group, and several other boutique investment banks, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. Please note that these materials are copyrighted and may not be disseminated or reproduced without express written approval from Let's Wall turn Street. ourselves to the basic valuation methodologies. On the one hand, we have basic trading comps. Trading comps are analysis of selected publicly traded companies. What this means is you take a look at the current publicly traded competitors and you see what the value of the market is, what the value the market is placing on these companies are at that particular moment then you take those multiples that are implied from the current observations that you make of the open market, then you go ahead and apply the same valuation multiples and metrics upon the company you are trying to analyze. We will see actual live examples of this. Also, there are deal comps. These deal comps are a similar process as the trading comps, except instead of using publicly traded firms as your competitor, what we are going to use is let's take a look at previously announced acquisitions in your sector. In addition, we'll look at a discounted cash flow analysis. In the discounted cash flow analysis, what that does is we will see how much we believe the intrinsic value of our firm is going to be, the intrinsic value. You can also say that the trading comps and deal comps, both of these are on top, is what we will call relative valuation. It's called relative valuation because we are looking at our competitors and seeing on a relative basis how much should we be worth. Both the discounted cash flow and LBO analysis are what we will call fundamental analysis. In this fundamental analysis, as well as a breakup analysis, what we're trying to figure out is fundamentally what do we believe the value of the firm will be. Leverage buyout analysis is also somewhat similar. Leverage buyout analysis takes a look at the core profitability and the core ability of a company to generate cash flow and then say, let's take those cash flows, lever this company up a great deal, and use the internally generated cash flows to pay down the debt, hence building our equity. We will have a brief discussion of LBOs towards the end of this particular module. For more information on leveraged buyouts, as well as a fuller explanation of the things you must consider when building a leveraged buyout model, please refer to our module titled LBO Overview. In addition, we also have a breakup analysis. In this breakup analysis, what we will do is we will take a look at a conglomerate, for instance, and we will break up each one of their business units into disparate pieces of businesses. For instance, if you were to try to value a firm like GE, how would you do that? There is no one good competitor that actually builds uh, uh, engines for planes, as well as uh, consumers for credit cards, as well as light bulbs and washing machines, etc. So from that perspective, it would be very difficult, if not near impossible, to pinpoint a very good competitor to use for uh, comparisons uh, against GE. So in that particular case, what you might do is you might separate and break apart each one of GE's disparate businesses, value each one of their businesses based on the previous methodologies, and then sum them up. Therefore, this breakup analysis is also called sum of the parts valuation. Finally, you would also look at asset valuation. If you have a company who has specific hard tangible assets, for instance, refineries, car manufacturing plants, etc., warehouses, you might be able to take this and say, okay, if there's an actively market traded for these particular types of tangible assets that you can split apart from the business, then let's go and see if we were to build all of that up from scratch, how much would this firm be worth? There's another comment, another bullet that I want you to add at the end of this bullet, four words. I want you to write in the words as a big bullet. Distressed, restructuring, turnaround, or liquidation. Each one of these four are very similar to, to each other, but they are not on this slide for a specific reason. Because what we are trying to value is the value of the company as a going concern, steady run rate, they will be around, they are not in any financial trouble, they are not distressed, they're not in a restructuring situation, they're not in a turnaround mode, and they're not in a liquidation method or bankruptcy. So from that perspective, just keep in mind that here, that it's entire separate, entirely separate discussion on how to value distressed and restructured companies. So for now, for this particular module, we will focus on an ongoing run rate current valuation of a firm, and we will apply each of these valuation methodologies on top of that firm that we are going to analyze.